All right. Uh, you outlined uh, the upgrade with Spencer Radler. That's pretty obvious. Um, it almost underlines the job that Shane Beamer did last year. Who in the world starts four different quarterbacks each three games, still pulls out a seven and six season, beats the likes of Auburn and Florida down the stretch, and then North Carolina and Sam Howell in a bowl game? And I watched that game every play and just, yeah, there are all sorts of guys coming in and out. I think your starter hadn't played at quarterback in, in like three years. It was just crazy. I don't yeah. want to anoint Shane Beamer, but at the same time, my goodness, he's off to a great start. When did you get a feeling that uh, he might be the answer? You know, I loved the hire from the second it happened. And, and I just felt like, you know, when it first went down, right, I, I was not a – was not a Will Muschamp guy, to say the least, Mark. You know, one of my big breakthroughs in business, and I feel like you know as a content creator that you have certain moments, certain clips, certain things that happen that sort of put you on the map, if you will. If you did not know, uh, after the UNC game, and this is just shows how life comes full circle, after the North Carolina game in 2019, I was probably the first, uh, one of the loudest voices, one of the first loud voices to go on record and say, fire Will Muschamp. I didn't think he was the guy. It just showed to me after you got embarrassed in the bowl game in 2018 against Virginia in the same building and you had seven months to get ready for the North Carolina game and you had all these veteran players and you felt like it was going to be a bounce back season to not be more prepared than you were. I just felt like, and then you factored in what he did at Florida. I was on the fire Muschamp train. I just did not think he was the answer to not think he was the guy. Now, fast forward to 2020, he gets relieved of his duties. And you start going through the coaching search, and you heard the typical names, the Billy Napiers, the Hugh Freezes, the Joe Brady's, if you will. And I loved the hire from the jump because, as I told you, Mark, before, you know, I've had a great opportunity to chat with so many former players, some of the greatest Gamecocks to put on the uniform, and to hear their perspectives on Shane Beamer. And it felt like South kind of just needed – to roll the dice, to make an out-of-the-box hire because South Carolina is not a typical job. Mark, it's a very tough job. It's very tough to win here. There are challenges unlike any other SEC school. Now, that's not to say South Carolina doesn't have the resources, a fantastic fan base, a beautiful campus. You're in the best conference in college football. They have everything they need, but the challenges to win and win at a high level are there. Um, so I was a believer in shaming from the jump, and, and I really felt like, Mark, you know, from the beginning that this is not going to be a one or two year thing. This is going to be over the course of five, six, seven years, allowing Shane Beamer to learn on the fly as a head coach, to recruit, to build a roster. And what he did in year one, and I said this, Mark, you know, the real test last offseason, I said, or last preseason, I said the biggest challenge and the thing I'm most looking forward to is, you know, it's easy in the honeymoon phase to have all that positivity and positive momentum and to be cheerful and to be happy. But when you fumble the football and you throw an interception, and more importantly, you lose a game when you run into adversity, can Shane Beamer continue to be that guy? Can he continue to inject positive momentum and positive energy? And that was the thing that probably impressed me the most. You know, South kind of got punched in the face multiple times last season. I mean, you think of the Georgia game. You think if you had to beat East Carolina by a last-second field goal, you beat Vanderbilt by one point. Thank goodness for Zeb Nolan, a game you probably should have lost. I mean, you look at the Texas A&M game where you got really embarrassed, and it never wavered. Shane Beamer was the same guy. He continued to be that same positive voice, that same positive force. And I think that's why you saw at the end of the season, this team continued to believe, continue to fight for their head coach. That's why you beat Florida the way you did. That's why you beat Auburn, and you're able to navigate to a bowl game. So, listen, is, is Shane Beamer, and I said this when he was hired, is Shane Beamer the guy to get South Carolina to a national championship or even win the SEC? I don't know, right, Mark? There's a lot of factors that go into winning a championship. The ball's got to bounce your way. Hey, no coach has ever been a great coach without great players. You got to go get great players. Players are the ones that win the game. But I will say this. I feel confident that if nothing else, Shane Beamer is going to leave South Carolina football in a much better place than he found it. And that may not sound like a lot, but in today's day and age where coaches are just leaving left and right, I think that is saying a lot for South Carolina football. And he was the guy they absolutely needed because when 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 the Muschamp era went down, this was a fan base and a program that needed a – a proverbial hug, if you will. I mean, that's really how it felt. So I think Beamer's the perfect fit for South Carolina. Again, he's a guy that was on the staff when the Gamecocks went to the SEC Championship in 2010. He's seen South Carolina football at its best, and he knows what it takes to get it there. Again, what is the ceiling as him as head coach? I don't know. Only time will tell. But I feel very confident in him as head coach, what he's doing. Again, all that positive energy, positive momentum. And now, you know, you win some games. And now, of course, that momentum and hype is, is sky high right now. And I think that's the reason, you know, you're seeing guys like, Spencer Rattler and Austin Stogner and 
Christian Beal Smith and Antoine Wells and Terrell Dawkins, and Devonnie Reed, and all these guys in the transfer portal and all these freshmen they recruited that look at South Ghana and say, you know what, I want to play for that guy. They want to go where it's fun. They want to go where the winning is. And South Ghana is getting closer and closer to that point. So, again, to answer your question, I'm very confident with Beamer. And it was very evident to me early on in just the way that he carried himself and navigated this team, not through the highs, but for me it was through the lows and through the adversities, him continuing to be the same guy with that infectious energy and momentum. That was the thing that really stood out to me. And, again, I feel very confident about him as head coach moving forward. And I joke with people, Mark, that I wouldn't put his name on a T-shirt if I didn't believe in him. I can tell you that much. So. <laughs> That's uh, the ultimate sales point right there. <laughs> if you're going to wear the yeah. billboard around all yeah, the I mean, time, you got to believe right. in the man. Right, exactly, exactly.